kimono styling differs a lot from individual to individual and also where you wear kimono. Are you doing it for tea ceremony? Do you do it just for fun and try to be fashionable in your kimono? It also depends really heavily on your teacher. So actually there is no right or wrong kimono styling itself. So yeah, honestly, this title of the, the title of this video is a little misleading, but I want to give you the most important rules when we're talking about traditional kimono styling and also how you can break it or how I personally break it. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. In the beginning of this video, I want to talk about styling theory. What are different kimono rules, probably ideas um, about kimono styling you should consider when putting together an outfit. In the second half of this video, I want to style or restyle this kimono I'm wearing today. And I want to show you what different options you actually have when you want to put together an outfit. And last but not least, I want to announce my little giveaway <laughs> that I planned for 5,000 subscribers on my channel. Thank you so much. And it's actually now over 8,000. Thank you even more. When we talk about kimono styling, you have to think about three things. The first one is seasonality. The second one is formality. And the third one is dye, weave and fabric itself. So let's start with seasonality. Seasons are probably the most overthought thing when we're talking about kimono styling. I see a lot of posts in kimono forums and kimono groups where people ask where, when they can wear a specific kimono item. And honestly, as long as it's not a summer kimono item, it does not really matter. And I'm going to tell you why. So seasons in Japan, we have winter, we have spring. Then I would put rainy season in there as well because it's really rainy and cloudy for a whole month. And then you have summer and autumn. And honestly, when you're looking for a motif or a specific color in those seasons, you can really go with your instinct or what you think is autumn or spring or summer color because usually those color variations are taught mostly the same all over the world because in autumn, leaves are falling, we have red leaves, stuff like that. And in spring, it's flowers, cherry blossoms. Oh, I'm thinking so Japanese. So you really don't have to worry about that so much. But what is very different in Japanese or especially kimono styling is that every season has a peak a peak point and when you're over that you're actually already allowed to dress in the next season. I think in summer kimono you see that the most because after obon which is mostly the mid um, August you are allowed to already dress yourself in autumnish colors. That's why there are a lot of summer kimonos out there with wine red and orange and also a lot of um, maple leaves and things like that are on those kimonos. So you can see a lot of kimonos like that because you're already, you can wear the next season after Obon. In winter, it's actually the same. You have New Year's, which is in Japanese Shinshun, and that actually means new spring. So you're already allowed to wear springish items or spring, springish kimonos in January. Another thing that I personally find very important when we talk about kimono styling is what kind of feeling you want to give the people around you. What do you want to make them feel when they look at you? So in summer, you want to make the people around you feel cool when they look at you. So I have a lot of clear colors in summer 
I have some OB kimono and also a hoodie that I made on this channel with snow pattern on it just to make the people when they look at me feel very cool and relaxed in the summer heat. On the other hand in winter, winter is a very dark season so you're supposed to wear bright colors in winter to lighten up the dark season. If you don't enjoy it of course you don't have to do it. In my case this is one of my favorite ideas. I wouldn't even call it a rule it's just an idea of kimono styling. That's why I have that in my wardrobe. When you ask me about autumn and spring, I think the most problems are actually the motifs of autumn and spring. Because when you have a lot of flowers on your kimono, especially when it's for example cherry blossoms, a lot of people think, oh, that's only wearable in spring. But you are actually wrong. A lot of flowers on kimonos are painted very abstract or there are more flowers on one kimono that actually bloom here in Japan in very different seasons. And that is done so you can wear this kimono actually throughout the year. I was asking someone who is actually producing kimono in Kyoto, what do you do with cherry blossoms when they're on a kimono? Because in the research that I did, and I'm gonna talk about that later, there are some kind of formal patterns you can wear throughout the year and they're not connected to any season and sakura should be connected to spring but i read somewhere that sakura is one of those new formal um, patterns so it could be worn throughout the year and guess what he said <laughs> you can wear sakura throughout the year he said it's not because it's a formal pattern, he said it's because it's a very pretty pattern and it also depends on how detailed those cherry blossoms are actually painted on the kimono. The only real example I want to give you for this is my magnolia kimono that I have sewn myself and I'm so in love with it. And you actually really only see me wearing this in probably March and April because that is when magnolia are blooming in Japan and that's just because that pattern looks so realistic to me that it doesn't really fit into my winter wardrobe or especially now in autumn i would never wear that kimono because it would just feel a little weird to me when we talk about seasonality i think best is you find your own style in those seasons and go through it. There are no real rules, so you can just pick up the ideas you like and make a seasonal wardrobe according to that. But when you're absolutely not into seasons in kimono, then just ignore it. Because in history, when people didn't have a lot of money to buy a lot of kimono, they just bought a fabric or a kimono because second hand was actually in trend in the middle age they really liked with the pattern and they really enjoyed and they were wearing that mostly every single day because it didn't have as much variation of different clothing the second thing we have to talk about is formality and i actually want to start with formality in patterns there are specific formal patterns that are called kisho monyo in japanese Kisho monyo means it is a pattern with a very good meaning that is supposed to bring you luck. And there is no good translation for Kisho pattern in English. Most of those patterns were brought from China to Japan in the Heian period. So a lot of Chinese Kisho monyo still exist in the Japanese kimono culture today. And then we have Japanese born Kisho pattern that also had actually a good meaning in the Chinese culture as well, but they became a very, very um, good luck pattern in Japan. So this is pine trees, um, bamboo, um, plum blossoms, cranes. I was, I'm missing one right now. turtles <laughs> and then there are also kisho pattern that were created in the Edo period when people were really into Heian period culture and literature um, 
they had this craving or this nostalgic feeling about things that were used by the aristoc aristocrats in the Heian period. So things like kaioke, hyogi, as well as koshokuruma and other things like that became a kisho pattern. Those kisho patterns are very often found on very formal kimono like kurutome sode, irutome sode, furi sode, as well as homongi because you wear those kimonos to very special occasions and you usually wish someone else good luck and you want to bring good luck. That's why you have these patterns on yourself. Those patterns can be worn throughout the year. It doesn't matter when a specific wedding is, you can just wear that pattern on that day and no one will care that actually pine trees or bamboos are evergreen in winter and plum blossoms will only bloom in February in Japan by the way. So it's kind of, it doesn't matter at all because the meaning of the pattern itself is way more important. When we talk about Fomalentine kimono styling, we definitely have to cover colors as well because Depending on where you go and what role you will play in that specific event, you will have to choose wisely what you're going to wear. I, for example, have this amazing orange homongi that is just, oh, I love it madly, but I would never wear this to someone's wedding because I'm not the bride. <laughs> so I would really go for subtle colors then. So these are things you should put into consideration when you put together an outfit. Where are you going? What role are you going to play there? If it's just meeting friends and going out for coffee, I would not care about this. This is really just for formal occasions. And the last topic when we talk about kimono styling in general is what kind of fabric, what kind of weaves and dyes can you combine. This really goes into casual kimono dressing. So usually when you have a tsumugi kimono, tsumugi is one kind of silk that looks a lot like cotton, you should only wear woven obi for tsumugi kimono. And usually when you wear a dyed kimono like mine today with a dyed pattern, you would only wear actually dyed obi which means the pattern is painted onto it or not woven into it with this kind of kimono. You probably hopefully can tell that I do not care about this at all and it changed a lot. Today a lot of people are just ignoring it so you don't have to care about that but be aware when you walk through Kyoto and it doesn't really match there will be one or two people who will come up to you and point it out to you and just gonna be like doesn't matter, does it, eh? <laughs> okay, so that was all the theory and let's get to the practical part. How can you style different kimonos? First, let's take a look at my first outfit. The kimono's base color, called Jiiro, is white with falling leaves in blue, red and yellow. The lining of this kimono is actually pink, so I tried to pick up the specific pink of the lining. Picking up the color of the lining is one of my favorite tricks for kimono styling. Then I used an orange obiake to accentuate the obi from the kimono and I balanced it out with a red obijime. Picking up the color of the lining can be also used for komono, which is obiage or obijime, not only the obi. Keep that in mind, it's super helpful sometimes. Another trick when styling a kimono is picking up a color from the kimono. First, I tried red. The red was a little stronger than I had expected, so I used a cream yellow obiage and obijime to build some kind of ombre around the obi and blend the obi into the kimono. The obiage also matched the yellow leaves very well, what helped a lot to make this outfit look complete. 
when picking up a color from the kimono you can use any color you can see on that kimono no matter how small its base may be so in this case of course blue is also an option this time i also blended the ob into the kimono with lighter toned obi Age and obijima but this time i stayed with cold colors to blend in the cold blue a little better into the kimono Another option to combine an obi with a kimono is using the opposite color of the jiiro, the base color of the kimono. On this kimono, this would be black. I used a stronger yellow as obi age to match the yellow on kimono and obi. And I also had to use a stronger color because if you won't, the obi will just pop out of this outfit and it won't look very balanced in total. As an eye catcher, I used a lighter obijime with a red obidome. Using the opposite color only works well with the right komono. But I think when you can make it work, it usually turns into a very cute and special outfit that you don't see very often. And lastly, I always recommend to use a total different color and just try to style it. It won't work always, but I found some of my favorite outfits this way. Using the right kimono can basically blend any obi and kimono together into one outfit. So a little experimenting is super important to find out your own style. So before I wrap up this video, I want to announce my little giveaway. You probably know that I have been to Okinawa Prefecture on vacation in August and I have tried to visit at least some kimono ateliers there and we have been to Ishigaki Island where a specific weave is very very famous that is called Minza Ori. And I have bought for you a Minza Ori Hanhaba Obi. It is hand woven in Ishigaki Island and it's a really pretty piece and I'm gonna present this to one of you. To be on this lottery please make a post on Instagram and tag me for this giveaway. It could be any outfit that actually includes a kimono so when you're just starting your collection that is totally fine. You can just throw a haori over your normal clothing so just make sure that i can see that you are going to actually wear this because this is hand woven people are putting lots of effort into making this so i really want to give this in someone's hands who is actually bearing it so make sure to tag me on instagram and to unprivate all your posts so i actually can see it and I'm gonna announce the winner in I think two weeks video. I wanna give you some time in, two, in the two weeks video. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support. Arigatou gozaimasu. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to share and like this video. And if you haven't yet, also subscribe when you wanna learn more about kimono from a professional kimono teacher. And I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye.